So there was a solar eclipse that happened yesterday. Nothing special. The moon just decided to stroll past in front of the sun and obscured it partially for some time for some of us earthlings. Nothing special at all. But I'm sure tens of thousands of superstitious people would have fasted and not eaten during the spectacle and spend their time doing pujas. Curious as to if our friendly neighborhood king of pseudoscience Sadhguru had anything to say about it, I checked out his YouTube channel and lo behold, he had. As always, advising people not to eat during an eclipse. But what is even more funny was that in that video he was mentioning about, well, 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 I'm not going to reveal that boo boo just yet. Watch the entire video and all will be revealed. So let's deconstruct the video. I'm not going to show you the video for fear of a copyright strike, but I will show you screenshots with subtitles so that you can follow along. Hello, I'm Anand and welcome to Pay Blue Thoughts, the channel which denounces pseudoscience and promotes scientific temper. So welcome back. So let's see what our dear old sad guru has to say about the solar eclipse that happened yesterday. It was a partial eclipse which meant that the sun wasn't going to be fully obscured. So his video starts with him telling us that in the spiritual process we are all in fast forward mode. Huh? What fast forward? What does he mean by fast forward mode? Are we some kind of a DVD player to be on fast forward mode? Or does he mean that we live a fast life. But I thought the whole idea of spirituality is to put you in a snooze mode and escape the fast paced life. Anyways, he continues that the moon is on fast forward today. They show a video that shows the moon moving really fast. Does he really mean that the moon moves faster on eclipse day than any other day? Oh boy, what a disgrace to astronomy. It doesn't end there. He says that all that happens in a month to the moon happens right on that day. Man, does he mean that the moon goes through all its phases on one single day? I don't know. You tell me. So when we are in fast forward mode, many things are changing. Then he equates our body with the food that we eat. Can someone tell him our body is not the food that we eat? We sustain our body with the food because our cells require energy, ATP. But to say that our body is the food we eat is stretching things a bit too much. So the cooked food will go through the phases of deterioration much, much more rapidly in a subtle way than it does on a normal day. Now the king of pseudoscience is equating food to the phases of the moon. Just like the moon goes through the phases, the cooked food also undergoes worsening on this day much, much more than any other day. What an amazing Gyan Guruji. And what does he mean? It deteriorates rapidly in a subtle way. Well, anyways, carrying on. This deterioration is not just happening to your food, but to your body and the whole world. How charming. If there is food in your stomach, the deterioration increases. Thus, in two hours time, our energies would age by approximately 27 days. Gosh. I think he's trying to compete with Deepak Chopra in making word salads for MasterChef. And then the master stroke. If there is food in your stomach during an eclipse, then you lose 27 days of your life. Oh boy, oh boy. Your body already knows how much time it is going to be alive and cuts 27 days from its life just because you had food in your stomach during an eclipse. And hey, I thought food is your body and body is your food. Then why this colliverity? And now comes the boo-boo that you all have been waiting for. What does the next sentence refer to? A lunar eclipse. A lunar eclipse. Not a solar eclipse, but a lunar eclipse. Did the YouTube editors of Sadhguru upload this by mistake? Don't they know that they are two different phenomena? Alas. Perhaps instead of 27 days of deterioration, your body might deteriorate 365 days since it is a solar eclipse. I mean, that's one year out of your life deducted, all right? Now comes the next joke. He says that dead bodies deteriorates much more faster during this day than any other day. He does say that no one has experimented this, but he knows it is right. That is the problem of Guruji. 
all that you are saying has not undergone any experimentation and hence cannot be falsified or proved. Science, as you all know, is all about experimentation and observing the evidence. What has been undergone the experimentation phase cannot be called scientific. And if someone keeps spewing such stuff, you know what we call it? Pseudoscience. And that is why I refer to Guruji as the king of pseudoscience. Doesn't that crown fit better than ever before? I mean, he is the same person who claimed that he interacted with aliens once, but he failed to record it on camera. So much for experiments and evidences. So he now refers to cooked food as a dead body in the sense that it has moved away from its natural conditions. Suddenly, the food which was the body a few minutes before becomes a dead body. Talk about stepping on two boats at the same time. So to sum up, if you have food inside your stomach during a lunar eclipse, it will rot inside you. Not get digested, but rot. Suddenly, due to the influence of the moon, all your hydrochloric acid in your stomach turns into methane during those two hours. End of story. Can you see how he befuddles people by using scientifically sounding words in a, well, subtle way? With his gift of gab and a western accent, he thinks he can fool everyone. Well, not everyone. There are still people with common sense left in this world who would call spade a spade. I had done a short on Sadhguru and lunar eclipses in this video here, but I still cannot understand why they would talk about all this on a solar eclipse day. Coming to science now, there is absolutely no evidence whatsoever for any harm done to the body if you eat during an eclipse. Any eclipse for that matter. Centuries ago, when people did not know what an eclipse was, they were fearful of it. I mean, if you saw something suddenly obscuring the sun as if it is eating it, I'm sure anyone would get scared. But then, as we understood what causes eclipses, people, mainly in the Western world, lost their fear. However, that fear still exists in our country and the kings of pseudoscience like our sad guru here uses his skills in a subtle way to keep that fear alive. Now I know the fanboys of sad guru will make a beeline to my comment box and vent their frustrations by referring to the save soil campaign. All I can say is let him first save some oil by ditching his motorbike. Let us stick to eclipses, shall we? I can't end this video before explaining what an eclipse really is. A solar eclipse happens when, at just the right moment, the moon passes between the sun and the earth. As the moon makes its orbit around the earth, and as earth orbits around the sun, the moon gets caught in the middle and casts a shadow on earth. Anyone standing in that shadow will be able to see the solar eclipse. But the moon passes between the sun and earth every 14 days, you might say. So why don't we have solar eclipses every month? Brother has asked a good question. They do not happen every month because the Earth's orbit around the Sun is not in the same plane as the Moon's orbit around the Earth. Moon's orbit is slightly tilted. If you were to draw a little Earth in orbit around a little Sun on a piece of paper, then you would not be able to accurately draw the Moon's orbit on that same piece of paper. Sometimes the Moon will be above the paper, other times below it. Only when the Moon is crossing the plane of the Earth's orbit, just as it is lining up with the Earth and the Sun, will an eclipse occur. For the solar eclipse to occur, the Sun, the Moon and the Earth must come not only in one straight line, but also these three bodies should be in one single plane. Although the Sun, the Moon and the Earth come in one line every two weeks, once on a new moon night and second time on the full moon night, they seldom come in one plane during these events. Similarly, the lunar eclipse occurs when the Earth's shadow falls on the Moon, which happens when the Earth comes in between the Sun and the Moon and they are all on the same plane. I hope this clarifies any doubt that you have had about solar eclipses and about eating during eclipses. I would suggest that you trust your fifth standard science teacher more than you would follow these pseudo gurus. They just churn out scientifically sounding words in order to mix spirituality with science. But alas, when will they realize that science and spirituality are like oil and water? They will never mix and that science is like the oil. It will always stay atop spirituality because that is the one that has the evidence. I hope you found this video entertaining in a subtle way. I shall be back with a new dimension, I mean new video very soon. Until then, it's bye-bye from Pale Blue Thoughts.